All right, I need something real quick. So I saw this incredible work of art online, truly something to write home about. It was about a kid learning the consequences of his actions through a simple yet effective way. And I want to copy it, be inspired by it, to create new beautiful works based on it, but I don't have the tools or money to do so. How can I create a cinematic masterpiece with just minimum wage? You are grounded, 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 grounded. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, so GoAnimate is or was a video maker. Pretty simple, right? But I have never seen such a huge and interesting community out of a video maker. So it's a bit more than just a video maker, and I want to take a second look at it. Second look? Yeah, I've been in this community before, and we'll talk all about it, but first, Let's go over the website's history. Okay, so I won't recite the whole history of the website, because I doubt you give a shit, and I certainly don't. If you do, then just go to Wikipedia, you freaking nerd. A man named Alvin Hung founded GoAnimate Incorporated in 2007 and released the first version of the website in 2008. It's basically a video maker where you throw together assets and animate them with very few clicks compared to drawing everything out yourself and share what you made to the world. In 2009, they added a theme or, or visual style called Comedy World, which is just Family Guy. Like, look at it. This theme would prove to be very iconic in the culture of Go Anime. In 2011, the website was added to YouTube Create, which was supposed to help YouTube creators make videos. It died in 2013. The video maker expanded to schools in 2011 with GoAnimate for schools and businesses in 2012 with a business theme and pricing plans. This is a sign of what's to come. 2013 saw the removal of the exclamation from GoAnimate, making it just GoAnimate, removing the fun, and the site relaunched, removing Go Points and Go Bucks. Wait, what are those? Oh, according to GoAnimpedia, it was a currency to buy character parts to make your character. Good riddance. Thank god those became free for everyone to use. But it's another sign! By 2014, the platform was blooming. Multiple different themes, assets, animations of all different kinds. Business themes, comedy themes, there's even a theme dedicated to anime. Tons of content were made on the platform. It was a social media. Early 2015 removed all the social media elements and made GoAnimate a pure video maker. Another sign, oh god! Well, hey, at least YouTube is getting good, so there's your social media platform with potentially better visibility and the ability to monetize. It was around this time I joined the community. I kept seeing these quote-unquote funny videos on YouTube and saw the GoAnimate watermark and logo at the end of each video, so... I decided to take the 7 day trial and later pay for the service. I want to show you some of the things I made. They're pretty stupid but really nostalgic, so let me just... Huh. Password not accepted? But this is the same password. Let me try resetting the password. I know the email I signed up with. And sent. <laughs> Sorry about that, we'll just check back up with that in a bit. The interface was really simple, even I could use it when I was really small. Let me show you around. This is the project hub, here you can see and access all of your projects. At the top you can create a character or a video. The character creator allows you to create any character in any GoAnimate visual style, kind of like making a me. They also have default characters for each visual style and a lot of people use them because they're lazy as f And the GoAnimate video maker is the real shit. At the center is your stage and to the left is all the assets you can import into your projects including backgrounds, characters, text, speech bubbles, props and objects, music, and sound effects. It's as simple as dragging and dropping them onto the stage. Oh no, I sound like a marketer. From here you can select your character and do any number of things with them, such as changing their expression, their pose and actions, making them walk or run, add dialogue to them, and many many more things. At the bottom is the timeline where you can see the project being split up into shots. 
This is also where you control the length of those shots and see all the audio from the project and arrange them properly. There's also camera effects where you can apply filters to the camera and you can add intro and exit transitions to stuff and it's just so good! Oh, and how could I forget? At the top is a save button where you can save the project and give it a name and description. It used to be a sharing menu so that you can share it to the internet, but they shut it down. Now it's just to save your work to make sure it isn't lost forever. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to cook a masterpiece with this. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm done. Now we click this button at the top to preview it. Man, that was a really good dream about Mario Kart. Time to go play some more Mario Kart. Oh no, my Mario Kart. Now as you can see, while you can't do everything you would want to, this program does allow people who would otherwise never touch animation to give it a try. This works best for demonstration videos where animation is a useful tool to bring a point across. Like businesses. If you don't want to spend a fortune on animation, especially if you are a small company but still want to get the benefits of it, this is literally perfect. But people still found a way to use it for other things. Like hypothetically, this would make my work so much easier. Why do I have to walk around and talk to the camera when I can just do this? Okay, there. Now what to do? I know. I'll talk about my favorite Switch game. This is gonna be a good one. Today I will be talking about Super Mario Odyssey, a very nice game that I would love to play again. Now let me just turn on the TV. What? It's not working? The TV was not designed to work you actual f***ing idiot. <laughs> I'm so mad right now. Turn it back. I can't do anything like this. Work, damn it. We are never talking about this again. So I was going along making animations for fun, just for myself, not anyone else. And then... It happened. The site announced its migration from Flash to HTML5, and with the move, it would be taking away all the non-business themes with it. The site would officially become a business site, and lose its fun side in the process. Truly sad, I saw a lot of people make videos about the impending HTML5 takeover depicted as some sort of apocalypse. There were people making videos killing the CEO Alvin Hung, why the f***? I do not think that the non-business themes could not be migrated to HTML5. Don't get me wrong, they had to move from Flash because it was dying. But I believe that this move gave GoAnimate an excuse to ditch those themes and fully embrace businesses as their target audience. While it is sad, to be fair, they can do whatever they want. And I don't know if that improved or worsened their profits. It's their choice and maybe for the best. I left a bit after that because I lost interest. Truly an end of an era for me. It was like a whole year. Yeah, I didn't do it for very long, but it did hone my storytelling skills. I told stories on there, more on that later. In 2018, they rebranded the website to Beyond, probably to distance themselves from the more casual name that is GoAnimate and probably all the shit content produced with it. The company name remained as GoAnimate Inc. though. And in 2019, GoAnimate for Schools died. I did eventually forget about the platform, but time to time I would come back again to watch my old content. And I did enjoy it. And I would have again if I was able to log in. I don't see a password reset email. And I looked and looked in spam and shit. And I double checked my old login details to see if this was the email and it is. The support article doesn't even say anything useful. It just says to email GoAnimate support. Well, I guess I'll do that. And sent. Hopefully they get back quickly. Really, really weird. 
Anyways, what are the colorful things this community has produced? Well, we can go on and on, but the most prominent type of video are grounded videos. This genre of videos involves a child character doing something very, very bad and getting grounded for an obscenely long time. Here, just look at this. Kalu, why are you home early? Why are you crying like a baby? It's because I farted on the bus, Dad. So woo hoo 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 See? That's Caillou. From the PBS Kids Show. He was a very common character for this genre. In fact, the most common character to use in this genre. And those are text-to-speech voices. Did I mention that the website allowed you to add dialogue through text-to-speech? Sometimes if you put in a weird phrase, the speech glitches out like this. Of course, it's not just Caillou. Another character was Stephanie from I don't know what person. If she's an original character or stolen from a show, I don't know. She also does mischievous behavior and gets grounded for an obscenely long time. And then there's random ass characters that also suffer the same thing. All these videos follow the same cookie cutter format. The kid goes out to a diner or something, whines about some random thing, wrecks the whole place, then gets forced to their room and grounded for a million something years. Then the next video, they return with their parents ready to go to another prestigious place like they forgot they imprisoned their crotch fruit for longer than their ancestors will last for. That's it. You are grounded, 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 grounded. For three nine seven one eight three two nine nine four seven four five seven eight zero two seven nine seven nine four eight nine four two seven one nine four nine zero two zero four eight seven five six nine seven nine seven seven six six nine zero two zero nine seven zero 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 three nine four four eight six seven two eight four nine two zero one seven four nine seven six five nine zero seven two nine five nine seven four nine two seven five nine zero seven four nine zero eight seven two nine seven nine zero seven nine zero seven eight seven nine Zero, zero, zero years. Let's go home now. Thanks for telling us, Kano. I tried this video format once while I was on the site and then quickly abandoned it. And thank god too, this is so repetitive and unoriginal. I made some contests for games that I wanted to make, but I won't get into those right now. I don't even have access to them right now. And I also tried making Doraemon episodes. Yeah, Doraemon. I was into the series at this time and I tried making episodes. And he looked like this. It looks stupid, but I like it. I also tried making several films, but I gave up because I made the damn thing as I went along. I didn't plan it out. I was having fun, and that's all that matters. And I would be having even more fun if I had access to it right now. And despite how stupid and embarrassing these may seem, I can't stress enough how important these are for me. It's why I back up every single project I have. I used to go back and watch them from time to time just to look back at myself, and I still want to do that. Losing it would mean losing a part of myself. I don't want these to become lost media. I love these! It's part of the foundation of who I am, what I did, and where I am now. If these were to ever be gone forever, I would be devastated. Like, I can't emphasize how much it would suck if these were gone forever. I really want to keep these, to keep for myself, and to release to the public maybe. The death of Flash doesn't help, so maybe, unfortunately, it, I think it's too late to get them back. But we'll see based on the response to the email I sent. <sighs> oh yeah, I can't forget. Did you know that someone made an entire movie using this humble little video maker? A feature film? I am, of course, talking about Go Animate the Movie. Oh, yeah, finally! You're talking about that! Hey, I watched that way back when. Were you born when it was released? I don't know, doesn't matter. It's a great movie, right? It's so amazing, and. Uh, wait, 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 no, no, let's think about I don't this. Don't care! Ah! This is what you get for breaking the TV! Don't worry, he has a parachute, he'll be fine. No, I don't! Uh, anyways, what was I talking about? Oh yeah. So the film is about a guy stealing a toy from Toys R Us, and two people try to get it back. I never talked to Brian about his Go Animate Insanity stuff. So, I got to go to Walmart to buy something. Where does PC Guy off to, Eric? He went to Walmart to buy some stuff, 
and he's 10 years old. I'm in a bad mood because he told me not to watch Go Animate every day, every minute, every second. You're a mean one, Mr. Keeble. You really are a greedy man. You are like as a bodyguard, and as devilish to be, Mr. Keeble. I'm not describing the whole film for you. Search it up on YouTube and watch it. Also, while you're searching up stuff, Google the movie and go to the Go Animedia page. There's so much made up stuff about this movie, it's weird. The movie is allegedly from 2006 even though GoAnime was made in 2008, and somehow they scored Disney Plus, 20th Century Fox, grossed millions of dollars and is still getting sequels. It's insane. Do you see any other video making sites having this kind of community backing it? Powtoon is business only, Render Forest is a giant meme, and Plotagon was okay. Kalu. How dare you use the last piece of toilet paper. I had to clean my ass on a paper towel thanks to you. Not as versatile as GoAnime, but it still had a community, mainly consisting of GoAnime defectors after HTM15 kicked in. Oh, and uh, I recently discovered that the GoAnime movie's plot might be stolen from another film called Greeny Fatome the Movie, which allegedly released in 2002, also has tons of made-up stuff on the page I checked so I don't know who copied who and who's doing what anymore. The good thing is that the community has archived the Flash version of the website before it went to dust and repackaged it in an app called Wrapper Offline with all the original themes, the original video editor, and the ability to, well, run offline. I tried it on my laptop and it works pretty well. Props to them for getting it working. Also, a while ago I was talking to a friend and he said he's a pro in animation. I was confused since he's the last guy I expected to be into drawing, let alone animation. And he said, oh no, I meant those drag and drop animators. I'm a pro at that. How do you become a pro at that? It's literally designed to be easy and it's not real animation. Aside from storytelling and maybe knowing how to use the tools given to you best, there's literally nothing that qualifies as skill here. Luckily, he's not an idiot anymore. This community that I was briefly a part of is... Well, I won't say fascinating, but rather interesting. While yes, people do milk generic formats for views, I really do like the original side of the community, the community who uses Go Anime to make interesting stories. Not cinematic level screenplays, no, but entertaining ones nonetheless. This tool is, or was, versatile enough to make your own story and possibly even kickstart your writing skills. It's crazy, I know, but you could. And honestly speaking, it made sense to expand out to businesses for their product. It does make sense from a business standpoint as well. They're an ideal customer for this type of product. I just don't like that they ditched the fun side of themselves though. Well, whatever. It was fun while it lasted. Anyways, what's the progress on that email I sent? Oh, a GoAnime representative responded. What did they say? No. 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 <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is what they freaking said. Your account will be deleted and everything will go with it if you haven't paid a subscription in a while. I mean, it is understandable. Servers cost money to maintain and it shouldn't go to waste. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I saw banners that were telling me to renew my subscription while I was logged in, but it was never about my account fucking dying because of this shit. I thought it was just a recommendation. More importantly, why didn't you email me about this earlier? Even if I had email notifications off, you could have sent me an email saying, oh yeah, if you don't pay us, we will delete your account and everything with it. Why isn't this on your support pages as well? Why do I have to contact you to know that my account will die if I don't pay my subscription? If you just let me know in advance, I would have paid the subscription and I would have downloaded all the videos I made. Don't you want money? I could have given you my money. Even though Flash is gone, I could have at least tried to download my stuff. Aternos lets me know if I haven't used my private Minecraft server for a while and will delete my things if I don't start it and that's a good thing. 
It sends me an email and I know about that, then I take action upon it so I prevent its deletion. Ow, ow, ow. I'm... I'm gonna kill them. I'm off to kill the CEO and the support team. Be right back.